first of all, congratulations for an amazing film uh, that has already won awards and a special mention at ITVA. Um, welcome in Aotearoa, New Zealand, where this is your uh, premiere. Um, I'll kick off with the first question and then I'll hand it over to the audience to, uh, to, to ask you some questions. Um, we were chatting earlier this week um, and you mentioned to me that um, you think the mo or your feeling of the moving is it is a movie about breathing. Um, I, I can see why, but could you maybe give you give your perspective why you believe that is? Yeah, well, I, I try to keep it short. When I was a young boy, we visited the islands, uh, the Dutch part of the Wadden Sea area. And as a young boy, I became really fascinated about this, this continuous tidal process. And it, it kept, me, kept me thinking. And then later on, when I returned to do film jobs and other jobs in, in the area, I began to realize that I see this continuous uh, uh, tidal process like high water, low water, uh, ebb and flood. I see this as a breathing process, breathe in and breathe out and inhaling and exhaling process. And then when I started doing this film, which I was thinking about for many years, I realized that this is a sort of repetitive uh, sequence and there are a lot of different sort of and similar sort of sequence going on in, in a habitat in, in an ecosystem like that. For instance, all the migration birds coming in the area and leaving at the end of the year, all the tourists coming in the area and leaving after the season, life and, and death. Um, and everything is, is, the, is depicted by, is influenced by the sun and the moon and, and the cosmos, uh, because these are the whole magic behind this, this tidal process. So then at the end of the film, I realized that it's not only this, this inhaling and exhaling and breathing uh, process of, of the tides, but this whole area, I realized you could see this whole area as one uh, breathing, great breathing organism, because everything is related to each other. And then when I was editing the film on the editing table, I discovered there is a sort of rhythm in the editing of the film. So the film itself is breathing as well. So at the end, I think it's about oxygen and this, this continuous breathing is, I think it's the heart of the film. Any questions, comments from the audience? Thank you for that. Could you talk about the uh, scripting and finding the story or, or the editing process, basically, and if you had a plan going in or if you shot and then developed that during editing? Yeah, well, we definitely needed to have a plan because you're talking about quite a large area stretching from about 500 kilometers from the, the Dutch, the German and the Danish coast, and it's about 10,000 square kilometers. So there are a lot of situations, a lot of locations, a lot of subjects. Um, and I thought, okay, if I'm going to do everything and going to show everything, it will not end up as a film. Um, and then I stuck to this breathing process and I thought the title process for me is, is the heart of the film and everything is related to that. So during the filming, during the whole process, I kept that constantly in mind. And then I think about eight months of location research, traveling around, meeting people, meeting situations, we came up to a sort of first a long list and then a short list of subjects. And then I had a look how all these subjects relate to each other. Uh, are there uh, situations more or less the same? Are there contrasts? Uh, uh, is it soft? Is it hard? Is it sweet? Is it salt? It's like a sort of music composition. And I tried to relate all these situations to each other. And then we started filming. And then the interesting film, the interesting thing in big contrast to a feature film, a feature film, you only have to translate the script. So you only have to do a job like a constructor. The interesting part of a documentary is that during the filming process, you could and should be open to things that happen. So that makes it um, really, um, really inspiring. So that 
is what we did as well during the process there came up some new interesting uh, situations that we involved in in the whole sequence and then you can say you make a film three times first when you write it then when you shoot it and then during the editing period you create the film again um, and then again you have to say bye bye to some situations you filmed and other situations are more than welcome um, and then situations and people and characters whether they are human or flora or fauna they decide where they will be in this editing timeline you can decide it yourself but some some way there is a sort of natural position of a scene in a film and then as i said previously during the editing of the film i realized the editing itself is is breathing as well so there is huge contrast in sound in 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 image there is lots of noise, lots of silence. The moment you think in this one area, there is no wind and there is completely nothing and 300 degrees of horizon around you in the middle of the mud flats. And there is no wind at all, but still there is sound. There is the murmuring of all small shells in the mud. Um, there's the murmuring or what small streams, drops of water. So every time there is noise and sound around you and then it's, it, it, well, how close do you put your ears and where do you put your ears? Um, and then of course, in the making of such a film, you have 360 degrees information constantly around you. And where are you going to put the camera? Um, why are you going to put the camera where and at what time do you do you decide to start filming well all these questions are constantly um, aspects during the making uh, of a film um, and, and although some people think that a documentary is something like an objective uh, process it's not objective at all it's it's a really subjective process and in the end every detail every shot every editing situation is 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 chosen for any any other questions from the audience i have another um comment and question really to uh, to ask you and i don't know if that crossed your mind in making the movie obviously it's a beautiful um part of the Netherlands and, and or beautiful part of the northern region um, uh, where we want to preserve, um, you know, the wild li wildlife and let it be in tandem um, with us as people. Um, and I think you've demonstrated that really well. Is, is there a somewhat of an activist in you as well with this movie or has it been, is it um, showing the beauty of, um, of, of the area? Um, I did not make this film as an activist film. There is not a really strong message. But then again, if you experience the film, that I can imagine that after seeing a film like this, that an audience realizes itself that we might as well be careful with such a precious and beautiful area. And it's not only about flora and fauna, because the film is very much also about the and I think that's quite a fragile relation between men and nature. And if we have a look at the film, then I think the most strange and weird specimen which is operating in the era is human being ourselves. I think the way we behave, even it's in our military practices or in invade the islands with thousands of tourists and the way we behave during this, this tourist season, I think it, we are a really funny sort of human sort of being, but sometimes a little scary as well. So I think in the end, I think, I hope, and I think people will realize how, well, how fragile an area like this is. Um, so there's not a strong message, but then in the end, I think the film has a message. Um, uh, another question from the audience. Yes, uh, it's such a beautiful film, uh, really beautiful. The pacing of it and the breathing really spoke to me. But on that regard, I was curious about the uh, time lapse sequences with the title patterns, uh, how much you manipulated them in terms of the timing, because did you split the screen? I saw like birds flying past, which you see as a 
live timing, but did how much did you play with the time? It was hard to get a gauge. Yeah, but of course it was manipulated because a tidal process from high to low tide is about six hours. And the film is about one and a half hour. So if you want to show a couple of tidal sequences, you have to manipulate the situation. Uh, what traditionally is done to squeeze time is that we speed up um, our situations. And then what I always say, you get this MTV effect, uh, like moving uh, water and moving clouds. And, and it's like a, like a sort of video clip. And I thought that this, we should reach the opposite because all these subtle processes, and, and when you speed things up in an ordinary way, would not have the right effect. So what I was trying to create is a sort of real time because never is the air or the water, it's never speed up in the film, but we combined, and it's a technical process, we combined the various stages in a tidal process from really low to high and a couple of stages in between. We morph them into each other um, while keeping and maintaining the, the, the real life effect. Um, but then still, it's like a magician does. It seems real, but it's not real because some, somehow you know something has been done. But like a magician, I'm not going to tell you exactly how it's done. Uh, but then, of course, things are manipulated to give you the idea of what's happening uh, constantly in this area. We so have time for one. Pardon me. There's one question. One more question that we have time for at the moment, I believe. Gentlemen over there, yes. Uh, kia ora, uh, welcome to Aotearoa with your film. Absolutely amazing. Not only watching what the tide was doing, but what was happening on the horizon. That was, a, that was equally a film watching far away of whatever was going on. Um, loved, I love the sea, I love the ships, the boats, all that sort of stuff. Because that's a connection we have back here in Aotearoa. We, the Dutch and the Kiwis go back a long way. Tell me this, how did you do the moon shot with the birds? <laughs> when the birds moon, flew across the moon? We shot this in Denmark. Um, and we had this extreme long tele lens um, of about a thousand millimeter. It was the Canon 50,000 tele lens. We were not able to shot with this lens during 16 months because it is always too windy in the one and sea area. There's always a lot of wind. So filming with these lenses, you will end up with really shaking images. And now one day during this whole process and we were filming and there was zero, zero, zero wind. And then even if you put that ridiculous big lens on a tripod, if you are too close to a highway or a harbor or whatever, the images are still shaking. But on that particular moment, and it was in the middle of night, it was freezing um, and the air was extremely clear. We were able to get this really close shots of the moon. And then one of the positive things to shoot on data, you can make a lot of footage on uh, until your battery has, has gone. Uh, but then at a sudden moment, this happened. Uh, all these birds passing the lens. Um, and this happened on another situation as well when we did a, a sun uh, set situation. That's, that's the, the, the sun, which looks like a sort of nuclear thing. It's, it's, it's somewhere in the middle of the film. We had, we had the same situation there. Thank you so much. Thank you for your questions. Um, I think we all agree it's, it's, it's been an amazing documentary film. Um, thoroughly loved it. Uh, recommend it to anyone. And I'm sure you will do so to your friends and family as well. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us this morning from, uh, from Amsterdam. Thank you. It was my sincere pleasure. And I all wish you a great evening and a great day. A great festival. Thank you. Thank you.